Hey guys, today I'm going to be filming my first ever raw advice series here on YouTube. Basically what this is, is you ask me question using the hashtag raw advice and I will answer it here in these videos. If you asked and I did not answer, I am so sorry. The way that these hashtags work is a little confusing to me. Twitter's the best way to ask because the hashtags come straight through and I can look at all of them. Um, but if you also, if you ask on Instagram and you use the hashtag in one of my pictures, it doesn't take me to that hashtag. It's very strange. For now, uh, I would just say ask in the comments of this video for your next the next series that you have or um, ask me on Twitter or however you guys want to do it. Any question that you have, I will answer and I'll answer it truthfully and honestly. Um, so just ask me anything and I am an open book. There is no holds barred. I do not care what the question is. I'll answer it truthfully. So the first question is from Workman Sam. The first question is, are you still vegan or vegetarian? Uh, I know a lot of people have been asking this and a lot of people wonder and a lot of people hear me talk about like going to Buffalo Wild Wings and then they're like, but I thought you were vegetarian. So I was vegetarian for eight years. I was vegan for probably like a collective two to three of those off and on raw vegan. Uh, I stopped maybe hmm, two years ago, a year or two ago. Um, there's no real reason that I stopped being a vegetarian other than... Uh, I actually am shocked that I did because I was so serious about it and so I, I still believe in everything I believed in before. It's just like my mindset changed a little bit. I still think that meat is equally, I, I don't think that it's ideal for humans to eat. I don't like eating it. I don't eat a whole ton of meat, um, but if I want to, I don't, I, I do, I, I will do it. Like deep fried pickles and wings are like my favorite thing ever. Do I feel horrifyingly bad for the chickens? Yeah. Does it go against every moral standard of mine to eat chickens? Yeah. Uh, why do I do it? I don't know because I guess I'm like everybody else and I just do it even though I feel bad about it. I'm really trying to cut back lately. I've, I've actually pretty much been eating mostly vegetarian like the whole last week or two. Um, I just... I just really am not that into it. I don't know. I go through phases. So no, I'm not. I wish I was and I really feel like I'm going to transition back into it because I... Not that I felt better, even though a lot of people were like, you're going to feel a thousand times better. No, not really. Uh, I feel pretty much the same, um, but yeah, there's, there's your answer. No, but I I, th I kind of wish I was. Okay, this one's a long one. It's from underscore V underscore I underscore B underscore E underscore S underscore. Periods in there too. Vibes. Uh, okay, big question. Probably TMI, but here it goes. I'm at this point in my life that I'm so stressed all the time. I'm going through some medical bullshit right now and it's really difficult to eat and just go from day to day in general. I'm stressed bitchy and on some really whack medication that induces anxiety attacks and even hallucinations. I'm trying to manage all of this but sometimes I just feel like I'm swimming. Got any tips for relaxation and calming techniques? I'm sorry if this question is a bit too personal for your channel. If you don't want to answer it here, I totally get it. You can DM me or kick me if you like. Thank you for your time. I adore your channel and your videos as always are a treat. Thank you very much. Very nice comment. Uh, just a FYI, there's no such thing as TMI. Uh, there's no such thing as too much information, especially for me. I will answer anything and I have no problem with that. So, any uh, tips on reducing stress? Well, I am a very stressed out person in general lately. We bought a house. It wasn't what we expected. A ton of problems. The house, it's going to cost us like $100,000 more than we anticipated. Uh, I have major health problems myself. I, I am a stress case. The way that I help my stress, uh, it's really tough for me. So I'm a stress eater. <laughs> it's probably not the best thing to do, but I'm a stress eater. So probably don't do that. You know, you're going to hear the typical responses from everybody. Go take a walk, take a bath. Um, you know, all those things, drink a glass of wine, probably wouldn't do the wine thing, especially if you're on some whacked out medications. Uh, my main thing is find a show that you like. This, this is, this is my way that I manage stress. I, stress. These are the ways that I manage my stress. I watch Friends. It sounds so weird, but I clean my house because having a clean house, number one, I'm going to just tell you right off the bat, you cannot be stress free if your house is a wreck. So get your house spick and span. I'm talking clean. That is a really good de-stressor. Clean the shit out of your house. Once your house is clean, take a shower, freshen up, get clean. Just make sure that everything's clean because cleanliness, they say it's close to godliness, but all I can tell you is being clean makes you feel so much better. Just, I mean, tell me, just do it. Take a shower, get clean, fresh, take off all your makeup, just feel fresh and clean. 
put on a good TV show that you like, treat yourself, and those things to me are de-stressors because sometimes it's when your life feels the most out of control, things start to spiral. So when I get stressed out, I sort of live in this pigsty, hell ish life, which is what I'm doing for the last week. I've been so majorly stressed out, and my house was hideously horrifying. I'm talking like your hoarder's status. My sister came over today and helped me clean the entire thing, and now my house is clean, everything's good, and I feel oh, like a weight's been lifted. And so I can tell you just from personal experience today, declutter, de-stress, everything should get so much better. Uh, you can take a bath if you want. Baths kind of help, but they just kind of are like, I mean, you're sitting in hot water, so how much that can that really help? Just do stuff that you like. I mean, I like watching Friends. That is like my show, Full House and Friends. Pretty Little Liars, find your show that is your like niche and that just makes you feel calm and you don't feel like you have to worry too much about it. I've seen friends so much that I don't feel like I have to sit there and watch every episode and it really is it's so helpful. So I know that's not the best techniques, I'm sorry, but those are really my the things that I do. So I'm just gonna tell you what I do because I can't be like, go do this and that. I don't go for walks, I hate walking. I think walking is so boring. So I'm not gonna mention to go for a walk because I ain't about that life. From Corey Annis, uh, what is your sex drive like with your husband? Has it changed or stayed the same? Has it changed or stayed the same since your puberty years? My sex drive is horrifyingly bad. I have a disease called polycystic ovarian syndrome or PCOS, so my hormones are out of whack. And so there's just something about me and my hormones where I don't really have a sex drive. It's been an ongoing struggle in this relationship. I I love my husband, I think he's sexy, I like sex, I think it's good, but I just don't ever get the drive to like jump his bones. I just don't. I don't know what it is. It's. is. I've been to doctors, I've had testing done, I've had blood work done, I've had it all, and what I've come back with is it's normal. And that's a very frustrating thing to hear. So I do it even though I don't want to. And I'm one of those people who, I, it's just, it's a shitty situation. I'm sure my husband would wish that I'd do it like at the bajillion times more. Um, but you just do what you gotta do. So if you wanna have a better sex drive, it's kinda just forcing yourself to do it even when you don't want to and you won't regret it. It, it comes off really good at the end. So um, that's just kinda, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely like when we first got together in teenage years, shit, girl, I was like six times a day, all day, but as you're in a relationship and the longer that you're in it and sex drives decrease, that's just a normal thing as part of a relationship. You will notice that you're with somebody for like six years and the first year you guys were together, you guys were just, you know, constantly in each other, blah, blah, blah. And six years later, it's just kind of, you get complacent in your relationships and things are sort of like that. So I wouldn't necessarily, you can't really compare teenage years to adult years anyway, because Teenagers just horny all the time, and I, I was, and now as an adult, I'm just, you sort of just get in the groove of things, and so that was a really long, long-winded answer to say, it's all right, it's my bad. He would probably have sex like five times a day right now if I was into it, but my sex drive is really, it's, it's bad. It's to the point where like, I mean, I've seen doctors because I want one, but I don't really have one, so I just do it anyway, and I, and then it, and then it comes as it comes, so. Abigail Lynn Reardon asks, out of any single brand, what would be the best set of all you need brushes, like use the most on a daily basis? Oh God, was that hard for me to read or what? That's a really tough question because you're gonna find good and shitty brushes in every aspect of brushes. So I use like two Zoeva brushes every day, but I also use some Sigma brushes every day. You can't go wrong with Sigma. I don't own any Morphe brushes, but I've heard that Morphe brushes are good, uh, and they're also really inexpensive. I've also heard Makeup Geek brushes are good. Uh, Sigma has never failed me. The brushes are not cheap. Like, I get irritated at the price of these brushes. They're like 15 bucks a piece, which is so shockingly expensive. Um, you just need a, a couple of really good brushes. Doesn't really matter where they're from. Like, if you're gonna get a good set, sometimes they're not all from the same set. So, like, I love the Sigma E40 for blending out my transition color. I love the... Sigma E30 pencil brush for um, doing my underneath of my eye, so smoking out my lower lash line. I love, this is my holy grail eyebrow brush. This is the Zoeva 317 wing liner brush. So it's so hard for me to tell you. I mean, the rose gold set from Zoeva is nice. Um, Cause like I use this one all the time to blend out my crease, but it's not super, trans like super like 
you can't really get a really defined eye with this, but this is a 227 Luxe Soft Definer. So I bought the rose gold set from Zoeva. I also got some Sigma brushes. The Sigma set is like $450, which is crazy. Don't do that. That's dumb. Don't do that. But you can buy a brush here and there and really create a good set. If you want a matching set, uh, I like my Zoeva rose gold set. All right, that was Instagram. Now let's go over to Twitter. At Emily underscore Mars 8 says, if you can't afford lights and proper filming equipment, how do you make a successful YouTube channel? That is a great question. Um, so you don't need lights and you don't necessarily need proper filming equipment, although to have a, a truly successful YouTube channel, you do need those things eventually because all I can say is that I'm gonna come, I'm gonna speak for myself here. I do not like watching poor quality videos. I don't. I won't even watch them. Um, if I click on a video and it's filmed on somebody's iPhone, it doesn't have any editing and the lighting is shitty, I will quick click off immediately no matter what the content. I can't pay attention. It's like it's like I, it's like my mind just can't pay attention. So I would say if you're going to not get proper filming equipment and lights and things like that, which I would recommend, but if you can't do it, which I totally get, film during the day. Um, film with your back camera. So if you're going to film with your phone, make sure you film with your this camera, not the front camera. Uh, don't look at the camera. Don't like look at yourself when you're filming and like look at yourself like all sexy. It's hard not to do. I just try to look into the lens. If I'm looking over here and talking over there, I'm talking to myself clearly because I'm like. Film in the daytime in front of a big open window if you have one. Get some good lighting. You don't want to be washed out lighting like we're, like this. You don't want your lighting to look like this because nobody wants to watch that either. But you, you know, just make sure that you're in front of a nice window. Make sure you use your back camera on your phone or you can use like a little vlogging camera or whatever you have, like any little camera that you have. Just make sure that you have good editing. Now editing is, I think, more important than anything. Lighting and filming setup and all that stuff, that's all great. That's all fun and good. But you, you need to have good editing as well because this is the worst type of video to watch. Hi guys! Welcome to my YouTube channel and today I'm going to be showing you all about my new NYX lipsticks. So my first NYX lipstick is NYX uh, Butter Gloss in Creme Brulee. That's, that's the worst type of video to watch. You've just wasted so many minutes where you could be talking about other things and, and you could cut that time out and people want to watch that video. Even if the quality is a tad bit poorer than what you might hope for, if the video is, hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. Now I'm going to show you that, you know, it's quick, it's to the point, it's fast, you can get, you can get, you get what you're trying to say. So basically just do it. You can still have a successful channel as long as you put your personality into it. Um, as long as you just, you know, be yourself, have a really good personality in your videos. You know, people don't want to watch you if you're somebody else. I've said this multiple times, but nobody wants to watch a video where you're trying to be something that you're not. Unless that's like your niche, like you're acting to be somebody else and that's what your channel's about. People want to watch a video of somebody that's genuine. And I, I think you can all agree on that, that it's important to watch somebody that you can tell is being themselves and is not acting like somebody else. So just do that. You do you. Good editing. Try to have some good lighting and use what you've got, but use it to the best of your abilities. You don't need an expensive editing program to do good editing for the first two, for the first year and like nine months that I was on YouTube, I was just using Windows Movie Maker. I'm using Premiere Pro now, but before that I was just using Windows Movie Maker. So you can really do it cheap and that shit's free. At Janelle underscore number five, or N-O-5, how long has it taken you to get where you are on YouTube? Do you ever see yourself doing it full time as a job? Uh, okay, well, where I'm at right now is two years in. Uh, April, I think it's like April 2nd or April 11th or something is going to be two years. Um, I'm relatively slow growing. Don't even say anything, Marie. Marie, don't even say anything. I, I'm close to 20,000 subscribers at two years. So I know some people that when they're at two years, they're at 500 subscribers or 1,000 subscribers. And I know some people at two years are at a million subscribers. So really, I'm not going to base it off of subscribe count. I'm not going to base it off of subscriber count because you can't do that. Otherwise, you're just going to constantly be comparing yourself to other YouTubers. Um, it's taken me about two years to get where I'm at now. I don't post consistently enough to where I feel like I should grow anymore than I'm at now. I am a busy, busy woman. 
I work 40 hours a week at my job. When I get off, I am drywalling walls at my house and working on my house and spending time with my husband and my cats. And I'm so sorry, but YouTube comes after all of that because my family and my friends and my niece and my cats and my happiness comes first. And of course, I do an Instagram post every single day. So that there's that. Um, but YouTube kind of falls to the wayside. So yes, I would love to do YouTube full time and just have this be my career. That is like my dream job right there. My dream job would be to do social media full time. However, I'm the reason that's stopping me from doing that. If I worked harder and I put out better content and I did it on a more regular basis and I was more interactive in the community and I bought more makeup and I did more this and I did more that, I could be where I want to be. But unfortunately, I just don't have enough hours in the day. Right now, it's like super late at night. I should totally be scooping cat boxes and eating dinner. I haven't eaten since like, like a shit of a long time ago. I should be filling my pill container. I should be doing things. I should be taking out the trash. But I'm doing this. And so, you, ha you know, if I had more time, I would so love to do this as my full-time job. But I don't know how people do it. I don't know how people with full-time jobs do it. They must do it all in their spare time or they're not, or they're single. Or I don't know. I honestly don't know. If I was single, I would certainly have more time to do this. But I got a husband I gotta see. And I got a, so many things that I'm doing. So did I even answer your question? What was your question? I would love to do this as a full-time job. I do see myself doing it if I can really start to work harder on it. Like you guys know, I, I post videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Except for most Monday, Wednesday, and Friday that I fucking forget. Same person, Janelle underscore number five and oh five. Uh, how do you keep the spark alive with your husband? Well, I think we talked about that before. I don't really have much of a spark going on. Uh, but really, we just talk a lot. We communicate. We like the same shit. So it's really easy because him and I are very similar people. We like the same stuff. We like the same jokes. We... I, we just are the same person, so it's pretty easy to keep the chatty side of our lives. Does that make sense? It's it's easy to connect with him as a person because we are the same person. Sexually, I already talked about that. Um, you really just have to continue talking to them and make sure you guys are staying on the same page because people grow apart if you don't. And um, I don't know. We just I just love the guy. I think he's just. He's, he's a good egg. Another question from Janelle underscore number five. For some reason, this one didn't show up in my hashtags, which I don't understand. She even hashtagged raw advice on there, but it did not show up in my hashtag. So this is what makes me nervous. I just had to go through and search and find it. Um, did you ever struggle starting out on YouTube? Were there times that you wanted to quit? Yes, uh, multiple times. So I struggled starting out, not horribly, but I didn't know how to talk in front of the camera. I felt super awkward. <laughs> I thought that you had to have like this big proper filming set up and so I would go upstairs in my old house which was an attic that was like three feet tall so I was like stuck in there and I had like this burlap background and it was like 500 degrees up there and it would take me like literally six hours to film a YouTube video because I would be so conscious of what I was looking like and saying and it oh my god and like look at me now I'm wearing a hat I have three day old braids in my hair and like super strong brow and could I give a shit less about what I look like on YouTube so it's so funny the transition from when you first start you think like oh I have to look perfect and I have to be perfect and I have to be uh no who gives a shit about any of that <laughs> So yeah, I, I struggled in that way uh, to where I just kind of felt like derpy on camera. Um, I also felt like I did okay in the beginning. I came from another YouTube channel, so I didn't come in it with zero subscribers. Um, I just told everyone on my old channel, hey, move over to my new one. And that gave me like a thousand subscribers right off the bat. Um, and that was, that was nice. So it made me feel like I had a following that I was talking to already. I wasn't just starting from scratch. Um, were there times you wanted to quit? Shit, yeah, there's times I've wanted to quit. Not because of anything negative or anything. I don't really get negative comments. I've had maybe three in like the last two years. I don't know what the hell with that. I would think with me and my personality, I would think I'd get tons of hate or my weight or something. No, not really. I don't know. But uh, there have been times I wanted to quit, meaning if I didn't have YouTube, I'm not going to say YouTube is a burden at all because it's not. It's a hobby and if I didn't want to do it, I just wouldn't do it anymore. But I don't feel like I can quit. Uh, even if I wanted to, even if I, today I was like, fuck that, I hate YouTube, I'm done with it. I can't just stop doing it because then 
what was this whole all about? Um, I don't want to quit. I love YouTube. I love doing this for you guys or with you guys. I love chatting. You guys' comments just keep me going day to day. Uh, but yeah, there have been times where I'm like, it's such a time sucker. YouTube is fun and I love uploading videos. Uploading videos, my favorite part because I get to have your guys' responses and reactions and comments and all that sort of thing. It's the rest of it that's so time consuming. Like this right now, editing this video is probably gonna take me like literally, literally four hours. It makes me want to throw up just thinking about it. Now I gotta go over to Facebook from Tamara Paris. It says, I've been following you for the past few years before your makeup channel and I remember how much you desperately wanted a baby. I remember when you and your husband entered an IV or a video contest for a chance to win a free IVF cycle. I prayed so hard that you would win. My husband and I have a seven-year-old little girl, but we have been trying to conceive for the fa past five years with no luck. We've tried Clomid, but we are going into our try IUI on our next cycle. I can't read. I'm so sorry. <laughs> My question is, how did you come to peace with not being able to get pregnant, and what made you not want one, even if you could? Okay, so if you guys don't know this, uh, we tried for like five, six years uh, to have a baby, can't get pregnant. I've tried all sorts of fertility treatments a lot other than like IVF and I did not try IUI. It's just too expensive and I came to terms with it before then. So she wants to know how I came to terms with not being able to have children. So this was really tough for me because if you follow me from my old channel, all I gave a shit about was being a mom. I wanted kids more than anything. And some people look at me now and they're like, you? You want a kid? Yeah, I really did. Like that's all I thought about. Dana, I wanted to be pregnant, I wanted to have a baby, I wanted to be a mommy. Fast forward to today, it's the last thing I want. <laughs> so the way, that I, the way that I got over it was looking at my life and realizing what I wouldn't be able to do with children. Now you already have a kid, so that's tough because you have, you already know what it's like to have kids and you already have another one. So this is even tougher for you. Secondary infertility can even be tougher than uh, just regular infertility because you know that you want to have a second kid because you already have one. Now me, I don't even know what it's like to have kids. So for me, it's like I'm longing for something that I've never had, whereas you're longing for something that you know you love. So the way I got over it was I just looked at what I have and I looked at what I do and can do and I realized I can do all of that and I don't have to worry about having a kid. And also my cluster headaches really stopped me from wanting to have kids because the pain is so bad that there's no way I could handle it if I was pregnant. And I don't want to pass that gene down to my child. I have a lot of health problems. I'm not a, I'm not a fit person to be a mom. Uh, I have a lot of health problems I don't want to pass down to a kid. I don't know if I could live with that guilt that if my kid had these cluster headaches, I'm passing a lifetime of agony and pain to a, a baby that wasn't their fault. And yeah, my husband wants to have kids too. We've both come to terms with it. We're okay if we never ever do. Uh, but I just, I just realized that my life can still be good without kids. So that's how I came to terms with it. Everyone's gonna deal with it differently and you, I can't expect everyone to be like okay with not having kids because it took me a shit long of years before I ever felt okay with not being a mom. Now, I feel like if I died at 70 years old, that's how I feel now, and I felt this way for the last few years, I don't feel like on my deathbed I would say, and I never had kids. I really, truly don't feel that way. I am 100% okay with not being a mom, and I never thought I would say that. If you knew me from my old channel, you have videos of me crying on the side of the road, begging people to give me free IVFs, you have me, you have me, sending in video submissions to get free IVF cycles. You have me begging and pleading with God to just give me a baby and now I'm like, fuck all that. I just came to terms with it. It is what it is. I sort of live my life by that motto. It fucking is what it is. I have cluster headaches. It is what it is. It sucks. It's ruining my life, but it is what it is. So that's kind of how I come to terms with it. I'm so sorry that you're dealing with it. It sucks. It makes you look at other pregnant women and hate them because you're like, how can you have a baby and I can't? And then you feel guilty for feeling that way. Uh, all I can tell you is you do what you have to do to come to terms with it. Maybe you won't. Do IUI, do IVF, do everything you can to have that baby. But if you can't, you're gonna have to find whatever way in you comes to terms with it. Because my way was just to look at my life and realize it's pretty badass without having kids and 
that's the, that's all I had to do. I'm sorry, that may not be the answer you're looking for, but that's the answer I've got. So. I think that was all the questions for this video. I thank you guys so much for asking your questions. Clearly, I am super talkative and chatty. Uh, so for the next video, I would say please ask your questions in the comments of this video. You can still use the hashtag raw advice. Please do. Um, also, if you ask on Twitter, obviously they'll come through some of them. As Janelle number five knows, one of her tweets didn't come through. So I don't understand that. And she used the hashtag. Also on Instagram, it's really weird. So use your hashtags, do what you got to do, or ask the questions on my pages and I shall find them. I'll screenshot them when I see them so I can save them. And uh, yeah, that's it guys. Thank you guys so much for asking your questions, anything you have. I'm talking open book answer. I will answer it. No, no problems at all. So I thank you guys so much for watching. If you would like to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, those are all at Rob D. Christie. Also subscribe to my YouTube channel. It'll update you when I put out new videos. Also hit the thumbs up button if you guys like this. I never ask people to do that because I feel kind of weird about it, but if you like it, thumbs, thumb me. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you at my next video. Bye.